sorry about that. Uh, I'm Wyatt, and the illustrations for this were done by Mohanad Jawadi, who's a friend of mine. And you can find me at jsgeek.com or on Twitter, GitHub, at Wyatt Pruel, or W. Pruel. And I want to tell you a little story first. I was talking to a programmer friend of mine a few weeks ago, and he was telling me about this project he inherited. It was this legacy code base. It was a lot of spaghetti code. And so anytime he you know, tried to fix a bug or add a new feature, it seemed to create more bugs um, elsewhere in the application. And anytime he tried to do a deploy, once he finally got a feature ready to go, the deploy would take pretty much all day to do. The tests that were there in the project were very slow to run. They would take minutes. And it, just, the application was just terrible. There were lots of performance problems. So if, he, if the application made a request to the database, it would take maybe 30 seconds, if you're lucky. So it was a big problem, and he was frustrated. But he did know JavaScript, and so he decided he was going to rewrite the entire code base in JavaScript. And since it was a server application, he decided he was going to use Node. And so with Node, he was able to have a lot more fun and also leverage his JavaScript skills on the server. But Node didn't solve everything for him. He, he still needed uh, a web framework to build off of. So he decided to use Happy, which is a web framework that we created. And it has lots of great solutions in it. It has solutions for doing routing, for authentication, caching, validation, cores, view engine support, and a lot more. So he rewrote it in Happy. And performance improved. His deploys were you know, not a day, just a, maybe a minute. Uh, testing was much better. So I'm not going to talk about all of the, those features that are pretty common in other web application frameworks, maybe. I'm going to focus instead on some of the features that are more innovative, some of the features that I think are more useful. And one of those are how teams can work better together using Happy. Uh, we also have this concept of composable servers. And then we also have created extra tooling to make your life easier. So we have tooling for debugging and monitoring. So you know, obviously, whenever you're working on a, a large server, you want to work with other people. So one of the problems we have is how do we work together easily? So that's something we've tried to help solve. And one of the ways we do that is we have deterministic routing. So our routing table will always be sorted in the same order. So if you have a new developer coming in and trying to fix a feature, you don't have to worry about them interfering with your existing routes. All of the routes will be sorted by most specific to least specific. And you'll get an error before the server is even started up. You know, So you don't have to worry about that. Another nice thing that we've added is validation for requests and responses. So if you have a new developer again, or just somebody on your team uh, you know, quickly fixing a, a bug, you don't have to worry about them breaking a contract that you may have with a client. We, we have this response validation there. So in this example, you have the schema there on the response and with just name and email. And we use a, a module that we created called Joy. And it's pretty expressive. You see, we have joy.string, and then we you know like names required, emails required. And you can say, like, email is an email, so validate it as such. So, this is something we do when we're doing development. We will use the response validation just to make sure that we're not breaking anything. Um, and then you also have request validation you can do. And what's really nice about Joy is it's also browser fileable, so you can run it on the client. So you can have the same validation you know, on different teams. You know, we agreed on this, this schema. 
let's just make sure that we stick to it. And then the third way that we help teams work together is this concept we have called plugins. Um, and plugins are pretty awesome. They allow you to extend happy features. So this is all you need for a plugin. It has a register function and then just the name and version of the plugin. In this example, we're handling the internal error event. So anytime you would respond with a 500, we're going to log that to the console. Pretty straightforward, I think. And another nice thing with plugins is that they actually work very well together. So you can be explicit and say that my plugin depends on this other plugin. Uh, you can expose functions. So in this example, we're exposing a function called util that just logs something. And another plugin is able to then just use util from my plugin. So, you know, working across teams, this is nice. You can all deploy to the same server. All your plugins can work together. You don't have to worry about routes conflicting, any of that. And another kind of pretty, uh, I think it's an innovative uh, feature we have, which is this idea of a pack or kind of a composable set of servers with these plugins. So you can take these plugins and you can pack them together uh, and then uh, you reuse them across different servers. So in this example, we have two servers. We have one listed on port 8000, one on 8001. And then we're registering two different plugins, good and reptile. And then we start. And that's it. You're starting both those servers with these plugins. And so we looked at this, and we realized that there's a little bit of boilerplate. So we removed the boilerplate. We kind of polished it up. And we realized, after doing that, what we were left with was just configuration. So then we created this concept of, well, the pack, but then we have a CLI and this concept of just a JSON file for all of the, the configuration. So here's just a JSON file that has the pack, and we're creating a Redis cache that will be used across the servers. And then we're creating a server with uh, listening on port 8080 and just adding some options to it. And then we're registering the same plugins we used before, good and reptile. And then you can start this with our CLI. So you just say, happy, give it the config. And this is pretty powerful because it allows you to like, bring down all of your production artifacts into just two files. So we just have package.json and then your config.json, and that's it. And then that's production, that's QA. Pretty cool, I think. <laughs> so we did all of that. Those are cool features. And then we also have been working on extra tooling to help developers have an easier time using Happy and using Node. And a common problem with Node and anything is debugging. How do we make debugging easier? So we have three plugins that I'll highlight here to help make debugging easier. The first one is Poop, which drops or dumps a heap snapshot whenever there's an uncaught exception. And then you can go use Chrome, the web tools, and uh, analyze that. Then we have Reptile, which allows you to open a REPL on your server. So you know, if there's a memory leak or you're just kind of curious what's going on at a particular time, you can you know, launch Netcat or Telnet or whatever in, into your server and poke around to see what's going on. And then we have TV, which is really nice for developers when you're just trying to understand how requests are related to uh, different handlers. And this is a screenshot of TV. So you can see what requests are coming in and what data is going along with that request and how it's you know, being handled throughout the application. So on top of the debugging tools, we also created a plugin called, called Good which allows us to do lots of useful ops monitoring. So with good, we log 
event loop delay, different memory usage, garbage collection counts. You can have request details and a lot more. And you can then log that to Redis, to Splunk, to files, wherever you want to go. And then what's really nice with having all of this data is that you can create some powerful dashboards. And this is a screenshot of one we created in Splunk. And you can just see just the volume of what you can do. So at the bottom, we have, uh, what do we have? Just memory usage, you know, and then you can correlate it with requests coming in. So you could say, you know, like, why is my, uh, why does the memory spike whenever I have this request coming in? And you can see, oh, well, there's garbage collection going on. So it's pretty, pretty powerful. It's really useful. Uh, so on top of all of that, we did create um, a nice tool for doing our testing. We were using Mocha and Chai and Blanket, and we kind of wrapped those into something called Lab and then simplified it just to what we needed. And with Lab, we have built-in code coverage. We use Chai-style testing. And we use this to kind of push ourselves to get 100% code coverage on all of our open source projects, which it's like, yeah, 100%, whatever. But it's actually kind of hard to do. When you get to that 90% point, that's not so bad. But 90 to 100, that's, that's, uh, that's a challenge. I challenge you all to try to do that, get 100%. Uh, that last 10%, you're going to find bugs. I guarantee it. So what's nice also about the code coverage we do have, um, it doesn't just you know, look at lines of code covered. It actually looks through like your ternary operators and checks to make sure all conditions are covered. It'll find code that doesn't need to be there, so you can delete it. So at the end of all of this, we feel like we've created a pretty successful, pretty useful web application framework. And throughout this whole journey, we've helped fix some node core issues, find node core issues, like the infamous memory leak that we had. Uh, our node Black Friday was a success. It was actually kind of boring for us. So this is. Uh, graph of our memory usage at Walmart running mobile.walmart.com during peak hours. Yeah, it's not, not that exciting, is it? And then this is our CPU usage. It goes up to 100%. We're all the way down here. It's like 2%. That's peak. So it was pretty awesome just not having to do anything that day. <laughs> So if you're interested and happy, want to learn more, we have a workshop going on today at 5. Please come check us out. You can learn more at happyjs.com. Thanks.